Before Ryan Gosling lit up the silver screen in the films like The Notebook, La La Land, and the 2017 sci-fi thriller Blade Runner 2049. I did your job once. I was good at it. Before hooking up with co-stars Eva Mendez, Sandra Bullock, and Rachel McAdams. Sam a bird. No. Don't do it. Sam a bird. Stop it. Yeah. Before expanding his resume to include producing, writing, and directing, co-owning a Moroccan restaurant in Beverly Hills, and forming the indie rock band Dead Man's Bones. Oh. Golden Globe and MTV Movie and TV Awards, 16 Choice Awards, and picking up two Oscar nominations, but so far, no Oscar wins. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. Ryan Gosling has firmly secured his spot in cinema as one of Canada's top two sexiest riots. But prior to becoming an Oscar nominated Hollywood hunk, Ryan grew up in a religious Mormon home in Cornwall and Burlington, Ontario, the son of a secretary and a traveling salesman. In school, he had trouble making friends, was constantly bullied, and struggled to learn how to read. But that would change after an audition in Montreal would land him his breakout role as a child actor and a friendship with another famous heartthrob. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of the sexy, sexy Ryan Gosling, prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. I've done a ton of bios on celebs in the past, including one on Ryan Reynolds, so you'll want to check that out if you enjoyed this one. As always, be sure to let me know who's next in the comments down below. Hey, what's up, Ryan and Justin? Well, actually, me and Jess were wondering how you guys got the name for your band, Escape. Ryan Thomas Gosling was born on November 12, 1980, in London, Ontario, Canada. His mother, Donna, worked as a secretary. His father, Thomas, worked as a traveling salesman for a local paper mill. As a result, the family ended up moving around a lot during Ryan's childhood, and he grew up mainly in Cornwall, Ontario, and also Burling, Ontario, which is about an hour away from where I filmed these videos. Ryan's family were devout Mormons, and while he has claimed he never really identified with the religion, it influenced every aspect of his family members' lives. One possible exception would be the divorce his parents got when Ryan was just 13 years old, after which Ryan and his older sister Mandy lived with their mother, and according to Ryan, being raised in such a female-dominated environment had a profound effect on him, he has said. I feel like I think like a woman because I grew up with my mother and my sister, so I've just been programmed to think like a girl. I'm attracted to films that have strong female characters because there are strong female characters in my life. That's my own reality, so it's a doorway into a world for me. One movie above all others had a profoundly positive effect on young Ryan. He decided he wanted to become an actor after watching the film Dick Tracy. Performing was a huge part of his childhood. He performed alongside his uncle in his uncle's Elvis Presley tribute act. He sang with his sister at weddings, and he was also involved with a local ballet company. Aspiring to Hollywood fame, he also tried to shed his Canadian accent and developed his own idiosyncratic accent. Can't say that word to save my life because I've got my own Canadian accent. Anyway, his was based on that of Marlon Brando because he thought that would sound more tough. Do you want something? Yeah. I'd like a bottle of beer. Beer's just in the bar. Oh, alrighty. Another movie that had an important but far less positive impact on Ryan's young life was the action movie First Blood. After seeing that movie, he decided to bring a bunch of steak knives to school with him one day and throw them at other kids during recess. He was suspended for the incident and needless to say, he wasn't a particularly popular boy at Gladstone Public School. Ryan was frequently bullied and said he had no friends until he was the age 14 or 15 years old. On top of that, he struggled academically and had serious his trouble learning how to read. He was evaluated for ADHD, but the doctors found that he did not suffer from the condition. So his mother quit her job so that she could homeschool Ryan, and she did this for a year. When Ryan was 12 years old in 1993, he took a short trip to Montreal to audition for a revival of the Disney's channels, The Mickey Mouse Club. He booked the gig, signing a two-year contract and moving out to Orlando, Florida, where the show was filmed. 
Now I'm in Canada, now I'm in the US. Now I'm in Canada, now I'm in the US. The experience introduced young Ryan to show business and some other future stars in the entertainment industry like his castmates Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> During the second season of the show, Ryan's mother returned to Canada for work. I guess with the show and the homeschooling, she figured she'd taken enough time off. She was gone for six months, leaving Ryan in the capable hands of Justin's mother. Living in the Timberlake household, Ryan became close friends with Justin and has stated that the two continue to be supportive of each other's careers. So we, yeah, we were probably a little closer than the rest of the mm -hmm. kids that were on the show just because we, you know. We had to share a bathroom. In 1995, the Mickey Mouse Club was canceled. After returning to Canada, a now teenage Ryan returned to the regular school system, studying at Cornwall Collegiate and Vocational School before attending Lester B. Pearson High School. But his life was not exactly back to normal. Also in 1995, Ryan booked a gig on the TV series Are You Afraid of the Dark? More gigs would follow, so at just 16 years old, Ryan moved to Los Angeles permanently to further his acting career. But unlike most young stars, he didn't take up residents at Hollywood or Beverly Hills. Instead, he moved to downtown LA where he said people led, well, more normal lives. They don't all have a script in their car, I live on Skid Row, you can't filter yourself from reality there. But even if he didn't live in Hollywood, he was still immersed in the industry. In 1996 alone, he appeared at Goosebumps, The Adventures of Shirley Holmes, Flash Forward, Avonlea, Ready or Not, Kung Fu The Legend Continues, Frankenstein and Me, and PSI Factor Chronicles of the Paranormal. And the following year, he booked the role of Sean Hanlon in Breaker High. The series ran until 1998, but Ryan was about to find himself out of work. The same year, he got the chance to play the title role in a new series, Young Hercules. The series wrapped up in 1999 and with his Hercules related experience, Ryan made an appearance in an episode of the series Hercules The Legendary Journeys. He also worked on a TV movie called The Unbelievables. But now 19 years old, Ryan decided he wanted to move on from family entertainment into more serious roles. His agent decided to drop him at this time, I guess because you never know what's going to happen to a child star that wants to prove how grown up they've become. But that agent probably instantly regretted dropping Ryan because his next role would be in the classic 2000 Denzel Washington football flick, Remember the Titans. From there, Ryan would score the gritty indie role he was looking for, starring as a Jewish neo-Nazi in the provocative film, The Believer. I want you to teach it to me. Why? Now your enemy. While a commercial failure, the film received widespread critical acclaim, as did Ryan's performance. The film won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival and established Ryan as a serious actor for Hollywood insiders to watch. He received much critical acclaim on the next commercial failure, The Slaughter Rule. The film grossed just over $13,000. But the New York Times identified Ryan as major star material. His other 2002 film, Murder by Numbers, would do a little better at the box office, but barely earned back its $50 million dollar production budget. The film was loathed by critics, but once again, Ryan was appreciated by critics and seen as a diamond in the rough. Entertainment Weekly described him as a phenomenal talent even in junk like this. But Ryan also got something else out of this film, even more valuable than critical praise. In 2002, he started dating his co-star Sandra Bullock. The romance would only last until 2003, but still, that's gotta make starring in a terrible movie worth it. Also in 2003, Ryan starred in the United States of Leland. Once again, the movie was not exactly a critical commercial success, but Ryan's performance was immune from the hate. Roger Ebert, who generally hated the movie, wrote, Ryan Gosling, a gifted actor, does everything that can be done with Leland, but the character comes from a writer's consites, not from life. Sure enough, Ryan had succeeded in convincing Hollywood that he had the goods and would get the opportunity to make a name for himself for mainstream audiences, starring in the 2004 film adaptation of the Nicholas Sparks novel, The Notebook. Before filming started, the film's producers were already thrilled with what they knew Ryan could do. Ryan is an actor I've been hearing about now for about two years. 
and he is the actor other actors talk about. The Notebook would be a sleeper hit, garnering over $115 million at the box office and DVD sales of over 11 million copies by 2010. The movie was nominated for numerous awards and would receive 18 choice awards, a satellite award and an MTV Movie Award. But behind the scenes, Ryan and his co-star Rachel McAdams apparently hated each other's guts. As Ryan later recalled, We inspired the worst in each other. It was a strange experience making a love story and not getting along with your co-star in any way. I guess their convincing performances in the movies, despite not liking each other, showed just how good both actors truly are. Either that or their performances captured something the two didn't even realize themselves, at least not yet. Two years after the movie's release, the two bumped into each other in New York. They got to talking and began to see that they had initially been wrong about one another and a romance began to brew. Basically, it's the plot of any rom-com. They hate each other at first, then they meet a couple years down the line and by accident, whew, well everything's different. They fall in love and they have their fair share of troubles. But in the end, it all works out. I'm actually hoping the same thing happens with me and Sniper Wolf. <sighs> a boy can hope. Oh, these pants. Again, way too sweaty. Their rom-com romance would eventually come to an end and they broke up in 2007 and then briefly reunited in 2008 before breaking up again, this time for good. During his on again off again romance with Rachel McAdams, Ryan's career as a Hollywood leading man flourished. In 2005 he appeared in Stay, the next year he appeared in Half Nelson, for which he earned his first Academy Award nomination. Between 2007 and 2010 he was in Fracture, Lars and the Real Girl, Blue Valentine and All Good Things. In 2011 Ryan started dating yet another co-star, Eva Mendez, who would star alongside him in the then upcoming film, The Place Beyond the Pines. Also in 2011, Ryan would appear in Drive, Crazy Stupid Love and The Ides of March. In 2013 he would appear in Gangster Squad and Only God Forgives. In 2014 he and Eva would have their first daughter Esmeralda, Amanda Gosling. In 2015 he appeared in The Big Short and the next year would be a big one for Ryan. In 2016 Ryan and Eva had their second daughter Amanda Lee Gosling. He appeared in The Nice Guy and scored another role of a lifetime playing Sebastian in La La Land. For the musical, he would have to work on some skills that had gotten a little rusty over time. Sure, he could sing and act, but the dancing would take a little bit of practice. You danced before. Well, 90s hip hop just doesn't seem to translate into <laughs> soft shoe. It doesn't matter how many times you thread the needle. La La Land would garner Ryan his second Oscar nomination. The film would also win Oscars for Best Director, Best Actress, Best Cinematography, Best Original Score, Best Original Song, Best Production Design, and for a very brief moment, Best Picture. Then, well, this happened. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. In 2017, Ryan would go on to appear in Song to Song and will play Kay in Blade Runner 2049. The remake of the sci fi thriller classic will also feature the star of the 1982 version, Harrison Ford. And from the looks of things, the two have already become fast friends. And I, as I read it, I read about the character that um, uh, Ryan. Ryan? It's Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan is also currently working on First Band, a film about the Apollo 11 mission, in which Ryan will play Neil Armstrong. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCrad. Thanks for checking out this video. I've got two more suggested videos for you down below. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe. Let me know who's next. See you guys in another video. Boom!